Hello and welcome to Kaylin Dash Tech Lesson 17 in this series designed for configuring from green field site a transit ISP. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at advertising our aggregated routes to our upstream ISP. If you don't know what aggregation is, it is uh, oh blimey, um, getting a lot of small routes. Um, covered under one larger route okay we'll go into aggregation in a different lesson okay so what I mean by that is that the internet itself uh, so upstream ISPs or ISPs everywhere will only forward anything that is larger from a host perspective than a 24 so a 24 a 23 a 22 a 21 network and so on they will forward and advertise they will not advertise anything smaller than a 24 from a host perspective so a 25 26 27 28 etc okay there'll just be too many uh routes there's already over 700,000 aggregated ipv4 routes in the internet routing table as it is okay so we're fairly lucky in the fact that we have um routes that are very simple to aggregate so i can actually give you an example of aggregation so let's get on to the uh, London Court. Okay, so let's have a look at our interfaces. Run, show, configuration, interfaces, and we'll do a display set. Okay, so all our interfaces are 192.168.1. Something. Okay, I know they're forward slash thirties, <coughs> which means they're in their own separate networks. Okay, but they're all 192.168.1. So the common denominator for all of these networks is 192.168.1. So our our aggregated route that we're going to uh, forward here is 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24, and it will incorporate all these forward slash thirties that otherwise would not uh, be advertised. Okay, now you have to have participating routes okay for for bgp to actually advertise so i'm going to show you how that works by doing an aggregate route of one that we haven't got any routes and one that we have so let's set that process in motion so we do set routing options Okay, and what we want here is aggregate, so we just do aggregate, root, and surprise, surprise, we need to put in the root that we're going to aggregate, and at the moment it's going to be 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24, okay? Now, to show you the difference, I'm also going to put in there a root, an aggregated root that we have nothing, no participating roots, Okay. So 172.16.0.0 forward slash 16. Okay, we don't have that at all. I'm using this to show you the difference. Now we have to write a policy statement. So set policy options, policy statement, give it a name, intuitive name. We're going to use BGP AGGR for aggregation. It's just a name from protocol. aggregate now what we've just done there is we've basically said the protocol aggregate which is being used here take what we've put into it which is that route and that aggregated route and pop it into this policy statement name so it's like a variable if you like that's now holding this information okay so that's the first thing now, the second part of this that we need to do is we then need to say to um, the policy statement, well, look, we've got those routes. What do we want to do with them? Well, we want to accept them. Okay, so we do a then accept. And the last line we need to do is we need to put this into our protocols. So we go set protocols, BGP, group, external peers. Now, Here's an important thing here. We have a choice of export or import, okay? So, 
The difference between the two is export. We're taking something that we've configured or from local, from our local network and giving it out to something else. Import is we are getting something from, for, an ex for, for example, upstream ISP. We're going to create something here like a policy statement and we're going to import it into our network and into our routing tables, however we decide to configure that. Okay, so here we're sending it out. So we go export and our little variable name that we've just created that has the information that we want to send out. Okay, so we're going to put BGP AGGR. Okay, so we can commit that. You can commit check it if it's live and everything else. And if you want to do something, um, uh, I'll give you a little handy hint here. If you want to commit something that you're not sure what it'll do exactly to the system, okay, you can do a commit confirmed. Commit confirmed. If you don't do a commit afterwards, it rolls back automatically. The default setting is 10 minutes. Um, but if it's something that you need an answer to urgently to see if it errors or doesn't error, I would just do commit confirmed one or two or three. That's just minutes on the end. So one minute, two minute, three minute before it rolls back. The obvious thing is if it all works and it doesn't cause an issue, don't forget to do the commit or it will roll back and then you um, your changes will not have been saved. Okay. That's uh, just a little handy tip for you there. Okay, so how do we know what we are advertising? Remember what I said here, we don't have any participating routes here. We do here. So let's have a look at what we're actually advertising. So what we do is we do run show route and then our advertising protocol. What are we advertising? What protocol? Well, it's BGP, and we have to put the peer address because we're exporting. We have to put the peer that we're linking BGP to. So in this case, it's the loopback of our um, upstream ISP, which, as you know, we put as 192.168.1.246. So let's have a look at what we're advertising. And there we go. We are only advertising this network. We are not advertising, so we're advertising this one, but we're not advertising this one. Okay, so how can we see or know what's a participating route and if there are any? Well, again, we can do a run, show, route. Let's do a 192.168.1.25 with an extensive on the end. Okay, if we have a look at that, we have a look at contributing routes. Okay, so we have all these contributing routes. That's how we know that it's uh, that it's going to advertise it, okay? And this gives you some quite good information, by the way, uh, with regards to looking at routing issues, troubleshooting, anything like that, okay? These are, these are great commands to have, okay? Right, so what if we did the same command on, let's have a look, 172.16.1. I don't know, 0 0.1, for example, uh, and we do an extensive. Okay, it comes up with nothing because we don't have any contributing routes. We don't have anything there at all, okay, within that network. We could, of course, theoretically just make make one up, create, a, uh, you know, a VRF and create a new loop back and, and pop, pop it in that way. But that's just to show you why it's not advertising that route but it is advertising this route okay so um that's the reason why it's advertising that now if we go across to our internet cloud okay and we do a run show route let's have a look and see what we've got in here oh and look we suddenly have our network advertised across under BGP, okay, um, uh, and uh, and that's good. That gives us our local preference as well. Our local preference uh, will cover that within BGP, okay. But it's a good way if you've got more than one exit out of an AS or more than one entry point into your AS from a similar um, uh, other AS. You can use your local preference to determine where you want that information from or which interface you want to go out of, okay? Um, so, 
that shows us that we've got our information. However, let's see what happens if we do a run ping 192.168.1.1, which we know is the LNS interface, okay? London LNS. Nothing. Now, there are plenty of reasons as to why that is not getting there, okay? But we're not going to go into that in this lesson. This lesson was just a very quick aggregation and how we advertise that information to our upstream ISP. Okay, in the next lesson, we're going to go into why we can't ping the interface at the far end. And it includes commands such as um, next top self, um, as an example. Uh, if you don't know what that is, we'll give a brief explanation in the next lesson. Okay, thank you very much.